Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? I invite you guys to stand up with me. We're going to worship. If you're still in the back, top off your coffee cup. Uh, politely tell someone you're going to come in this room and worship Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, sing with me. We're going to sing and look to Jesus. And when, Lord, I just pray that we would focus on you this morning. God, that we would leave, uh, leave our baggage and leave uh, uh, distractions, Lord, at the door. Leave it uh, behind us as we focus on you in this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Make sure this is stop. All right, all right, I think we're good. <laughs> And death looks like an empty grave And fear looks like a giant slain Trials look like gifts of grace When I look to Jesus and Failures bow to victory And sin has lost its hold on me and endless love is all I see when I look to Jesus. Yeah. How my heart leaps, how my soul sings, for I know where my help comes from. Jesus sought me, Jesus saved me. Hallelujah for all he's done. And every wall comes crashing down And chains are broken on the ground And workers stand against us now When we look to Jesus yeah. How my heart leaps How my soul sings For I know where my help comes from Jesus taught me, Jesus saved me, hallelujah for all he's done, for all he's done. We'll keep our eyes on him. And I will keep my eyes on you, will dance upon the crashing waves. And I will keep my eyes on you, for only you can make a way. And I will keep my eyes on you, will dance upon the crashing waves.
We'll go with the, oh, hey, wow. It's a good thing I didn't yell again. Hey, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming here at the start of what is, for many people, kind of a holiday week. Love the turnout today. Uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, you all can sit down. Uh, it's going to be a few minutes. Uh, not all me talking. You're lucky for that. Uh, I'm going to open us up in prayer. We'll go through some announcements. We'll get you all set. We'll go back to singing, and we'll get to the message. Um, let's pray, shall we? Lord, we are thankful for the opportunity to be here. We are thankful that we can come to a place, whether in person or remotely, that you always have a place for us. You always meet us where we're at. You always have us move to your rhythm and to your timeline. We pray that we're patient and that we look for where you would take us. We pray that we always have our eyes on you and we reflect what your love is like. Amen. Well, Leah's going to come up. She's going to get us through some announcements, and we'll cruise through our morning. That's very hopeful. Um, my name is Leah Barham, if we have not met. Um, I'm the office manager here at Arbor Heights. Um, I'm also the director of our Capri School as well. Um, if you're joining us for the first time today um, or haven't connected with us, I want to point out the white card in the pocket in front of you. This is our Connect card. This is how we can connect with you um, post-service and get to know you a little better. There also in that pocket is a bookmark, and that is an opportunity for you to learn more about us. And so it has our vision and our mission, and it also has some QR codes on the back um, for more information. Um, I do have three announcements that I want to share with you, and most of them are, are resources, actually. And so um, one of the things here at Arbor Heights Community Church that's really important um, for us to help you in growing in your relationship with Christ. And so if you have not kind of perused our website, there is a tab on the homepage called Resources. And under the resources, you will find it's our growth resources is what we um, want to point out to you. And there are reading plans, Bible reading plans. There's journals. Um, there's different um, information. You can find out how to get connected with our Right Now Media account. Um, you can learn more about our denomination. All of those things are in that area. And so we just encourage you to check that out um, if you're looking to, to grow in your relationship with Christ, which we hope you are. Uh, the second thing I want to share with you uh, is that we here at Arbor Heights also have the four C's. And what those four C's are, they're kind of a progression of how you get connected here at the church. And so we have come, connect, cultivate, and catapult are the four C's. And you are somewhere under those seats. And so if this is your first time here today or your second time, um, you would be under, under come. And so those, uh, you can see behind me some examples of how you can come. And then the next one is connect, some opportunities of how you can connect here at the church. Um, in the fall, we'll have a welcome class. Um, we're going to have some events over the summer, and you can read about all of those in the bulletin. The last announcement is about a resource that many of you may not even know we have. Um, so we have a, many in our community that experience um, food insecurity and rely heavily on the White Center Food Bank. And so if you come in or out this south door, um, you may have noticed a big yellow barrel. And we actually collect food to donate to the food bank. And so if that is something that you would like to participate, you can bring stuff when you're here at the church and just drop it in the barrel, and the church will make sure it gets over to the food bank. There's some things to keep in mind. If you do canned food, they really appreciate it being the pop top lids. Um, and then also that the expiration date of whatever you donate is at least 18 months out because um, that gives them a little bit of a, of a window. So pray about that if that's something you'd like to participate in. And again, it's the check out the yellow barrel as you come and go from church today. Uh, and I'll invite up Kevin to pray for our offering. morning. For our offering, I'll be reading from Romans 12, verses 11 through 13. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. 
this was a really important scripture for me. It reminds me of why it's so important to read scripture every day, to remember why Jesus sought me, why Jesus saved me, what, what is the purpose he has for us. And I would love to say that I'm never lacking in spiritual fervor, but that wouldn't always be true. And I would love to say that I'm patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer, and again, that wouldn't always be true, but by reading scripture daily, I am reminded of why Jesus sought me, and Jesus saved me, to be looking to him, and why he wants us to look to him. One of the ways is to share with those who are in need, and one of the ways we do that is with our offering. Behind me, are the ways to give. And I don't know, are we still doing the, the, the cash? Okay, yeah, so, but you can do Venmo, is that correct? And if you're visiting or new, we don't expect you to offer, but we do, we would love it if you did fill out the, the connect card. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. <laughs> So now I'm going to pray for our offering. Father, I thank you for all your blessings, especially for your reminders of how much you have given us and why you have given that to us. And I just pray that you would bless the offering and bless those who are giving and that it would be a show of our generosity to those who are in need and also our faith in you and our thankfulness for what you have given us. In your name I pray. Amen. So following on Kevin from the uh, giving, I'm uh, the if you may not know me, my name's Brandon. Um, I just came into the position uh, just this last month, actually. And so um, I was asked to give kind of a financial update. Uh, we're kind of the mid-year here, if you didn't notice. Um, in your bulletin, you'll see there's regularly numbers posted for the budget and the giving uh, year to date. Um, so right now, we're, like I said, about halfway through the year. And actually, our giving is is somewhat uh, below expected for, for the year so far. So um, just keep that in mind. As uh, you may have noticed, we're currently in the summer months. And so usually attendance kind of goes off as people kind of head off to their vacations throughout the year. But the church still has regular um, expenses that we have to, to do, including salaries and, and the normal day-to-day -day utilities and, and all the supplies and things that go on at the church. So just keep that in mind as you're, as you're off on your vacations that you uh, plan either to, uh, to give ahead of time or give through one of the, the, the mechanisms. I guess they're not up there right now, but um, that you can do through the website or through, through the, the Venmo app, or you can uh, also set that up with your, your bank payment as well. Um, let's see, I got a few notes here of what other things that I was supposed to talk about. Um, so yes, like I said, uh, usually attendance kind of trickles down. So we, we have sort of somewhat expectation of seasonality with the, the, the giving. So, um, we're hoping that that's just a normal, normal ebb and flow and that, that things will pick back up again. But just, just, uh, keep that in mind. Like I said, um, there are ways to give as well beyond just the ones up here. If you need more information about that, you can speak with me or Leah at the church office. There's, um, you can actually set up uh, stock if you get uh, stock through your work or, or other, other types of gifts, like if you want to donate uh, real estate. Maybe you didn't know this, but that has been a thing that has happened in the past. And so, you know, part of the facilities and things here there, ha there are ways to give non-cash gifts as well. Um, also, I wanted to show you the, the church giving guide. This kind of tells you all about 
what um, you're giving is used for and how we do that. Part of that is the sort of day-to-day uh, -day operations of the church as well as the, the ministry areas. And, um, you know, as the treasurer, I, I kind of keep track of our finances and things like that. Leah, as the, as the church office uh, manager, she does all the bookkeeping and, and that sort of thing. Um, also, on the capital campaign, which is also in the um, the bulletin, you can see we've had, to date, there's been $39,260 given, which is, which is a good amount. That is enough to kind of get started on the project for um, the, the bathroom on the main floor, which is what the, the original plans were for the capital campaign. That's not the amount that we were originally aiming for, but it is enough to get started on that project. And so I know that they've put that out for bids and they're going to start doing that. So we're gonna get an accessible bathroom on the main floor, which is great. Um, and that's gonna go over here on this uh, 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 side of the church towards the entryway. So, um, and you can still give to that. So even though we didn't reach our target, we're gonna still take um, continue giving in that that capital campaign uh, fund. All right, um, that's all I had to say, and I guess it's now time to hear from Leah again. <laughs> Me again. Um, before we continue worshiping, uh, it is time to dismiss the kids. Will you join me in a blessing over them? Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for the ability to gather together and worship you and hear from Russ what you have been um, teaching him this week, Lord. Um, we say a blessing over the children's classes, both the nursery and Sunday adventures, Lord. We just pray that um, in these groups that they will learn more about you and build relationship with each other. Lord, we also thank you for the volunteers who sacrifice their morning um, to pour into the youngest of our congregation. We love you, Lord. In your name, amen. Um, we have Sunday adventures today for kindergarten through fifth grade. They can be dismissed. Please stand and worship with us. breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos? Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory. The King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of his brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. 
that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be safe. Free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave, and worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, 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 oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love, that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be safe. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing grace. And this is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Whoa. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Never runs 
out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love. And in death and life, and in death and in life, I'm confident. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. sing a song called Here Again. And I just love that this song just points out the fact that we serve a God, not that we have to work towards him, but he meets us where we're at. He meets wherever we're at in our sin, in our faith, in our faithlessness, in our struggle. Whatever it is, he meets us and we don't have to work, do good things to meet him. He's available to everyone who calls upon him chorus says, I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? And the bridge talks about him not forsaking us, not leaving us, and that he's here in this place. Let's sing it together.
unless you come, will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? As I walk. And as I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory.
Jesus, thank you that you meet us where we're at. Thank you that we get to serve you and that you get to reach down, that you loved us first, that before we could ever do anything, it was you who made the first move, who called our names. And Jesus, we thank you and praise you for that. In your name we pray, amen. Let's uh, read God's word together. This is Galatians 3, 23 through 28. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge of us um, to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you so much. You had such a big plan, a plan way before we started here. God, that you set, sent your son, but before that you sent plenty of messages, plenty of laws, plenty of everything to lead us to you, that you have been guiding us to you from the very beginning of time. Thank you, God, for your faith, uh, the gift of faith that you've given to us. Thank you for your love and your consistent calling to us and all the promises you've given to us. Uh, bless this time together this morning in your precious name. Amen. Thanks, Kate. Hello, good morning. I have the privilege of uh, speaking to you today. Um, last week, uh, John was here, and or a couple weeks ago, and uh, he shared about uh, the Lord's Prayer, and that was an amazing um, series that we're just kicking off. Uh, I am not going to be continuing on in that series. We have to wait until he comes back, um, and then he'll be sharing with us. Um, but John right now has the opportunity to go on vacation with his family, and that is, is a blessed time. Um, and it's my intent, though, and it's our intent here at Arbor Heights, that we're not following just a pastor or not following a person, but we're following the person of Jesus Christ. We're following his God and through his Holy Spirit. Um, and that's really my hope for today, is it's a different voice, um, but it's the same spirit. Um, we're going to go into the Holy Word, um, and we hope that it drips of um, meaning to you um, and enriches your lives and through prayer and through reading. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. Um, I'm not even the best example. What I've tried to be is a servant and serving along with many of you and uh, we have the opportunity to rub elbows, um, and Scripture kind of talks about iron sharpening iron. Um, and through that, um, we reflect the mission of where we're joining, working to join Jesus in his mission to transform the world and transform ourselves um, as we're serving him. Let's start by going to prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for who you are. I thank you that you brought us to this moment. I thank you that you brought us to this place. I thank you that you brought us your Son and your Holy Spirit to live with us now. And we pray that our hearts are open to your teaching as we open your word, as we talk, as we reflect on you. We ask, dear Lord, that you transform us. We ask that you speak to us in a way that we know how to respond. We know how to share you more and more in deeper ways with each other, and with the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Um, this isn't my first time sharing up here. Um, I've shared a couple times in the past, and it's always been on living. Uh, I shared one time on vine living, and that was uh, directly from Jesus in chapter 15 during the Last Supper. He got his disciples together, and he said, hey, life is to look like a vine, um, where you are a vine, and my father is the vine dresser, and he's going to be feeding you. Um, and as an allegory. And the next time I, I talked, I shared from Hebrews chapter 12, 
And that was where Paul was kind of explaining Christian living, and he explained it as a race. And he said, we're racing, not just running, we're racing, and we're racing to win. There's a purpose to it. Um, and again, it was this allegory. Um, so this time, as, as John asked me to share, I, I shared, I wanted to share from my own devotions and what's been on my heart, and that's I keep going to these Christian allegories, or the other thing that sticks up is uh, Christianese sayings and things, and I'm like, okay, how can I make this real, um, you know, when I get up, go to work, when I talk to my kids, when I'm walking around, um, how, what, what, is, what, is, what does Christian living look like um, for me and for, for you? Um, and so I wanted to go to God's word for that, and so the first place to look is Galatians chapter 5, um, so if you'd open up with me. I think it's very important that we open up the Word of God together, um, even though it is nice to have the uh, overhead. It's just good practice to get into the Scriptures. So we're going to read Galatians 5.1. And I hear the pages turning, which is great. I love that. We read Galatians 5, chapter... Chapter 5, verse 1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm, and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. I wanted to stop right there. Um, take a little break. If your Bible's like mine, there's the heading on that, Walking in Christ, which is what in my devotions led me here. I was like, all right, we're going to learn about walking in Christ. Um, it's a cool verse here in chapter 5, but... Chapter 5 isn't a standalone verse. It goes along with the entire book before it. Um, there's actually real life living. There's daily activities, relationships, and attitudes, and conflicts that led up to uh, uh, Galatians 5.1. Um, and it's a little ambiguous as you read the, the verse. It's kind of a, a summation. Um, it says, for freedom, Christ set us free, but, but why and how and what's going on? Um, and then I'll, this is why I numbered my pages. Um, it's a bit of, but we need some, some context for it. Um, so, Walking in the Spirit comes um, in contrast views to living, and he was talking about uh, natural living, was living in slavery. Um, and that's what's explained in chapters 1 through 5. Now, if you didn't know, Galatia, is, Galatia was kind of the ancient name for Turkey. So um, it's a city um, in Turkey. And in that city, there was an intermix of different cultures, a lot of different cultures coming together. And Paul, throughout his missionary journey, had actually showed up there and talked to the Galatians um, and shared Christ. And very profitable, many of them became Christians and took on the, the gospel and said, yes, we want to believe in Jesus. Um, so much so that there was a large church there and that Peter and many of the other apostles um, were, were showing up there. But in Galatians, um, Paul writes about what has happened as they um, were working out their Christian lives. And he says in verse one, or chapter 1, verse 6, I'm astonished that you are quickly deserting the one who called you to live in grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. You see, Paul's testimony was that, remember, he was um, an advocate of the Jewish tradition, um, and against Christians, and he was persecuting Jews for a long time until Jesus showed up and kind of spoke to him and said, hey, no, <laughs> this isn't what I've called you to do. Um, so he was actually touched by God, and he completely did a, a 180, and he became then an apostle after this. Um, it took some time um, where he learned um, what it meant to be a Christian, and then he started going on missionary journeys and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and the transformation that had happened in his life. I went from um, persecuting Christians to proclaiming um, Jesus. And so he had a very good testimony of what it meant to, to live um, as someone transformed by Christ. 
So much so that when he got to the, um, the city of Galatia um, and he was meeting with the other apostles, um, some of the apostles were stepping aside when they got together um, with all the believers and they were performing kind of cliques. And Peter was also being in this. He was hanging out with the other Jews and not with the, um, the Christian Gentiles. Um, there were cliques of men and women. There were cliques of poor and rich. Um, so yes, they'd come together, but then they'd separate. And he said, this isn't to be. You see, the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul, um, and he said, when we form these cliques and when we step aside, we're actually reverting to what we know, um, and we're reverting to um, our past traditions. In verses 3, 2 through 3, he says that these works, um, that he was amazed that they were deserting the calling of Jesus Christ, which was to everyone, and that they were going back to look at, well, um, in the case of Peter, it was um, looking to the Jewish customs, and we'll be uh, Jews together um, and just acknowledge Christ. He says, no, we are to live in Christ um, because that is, the, that is the saving grace. That is the plan. Um, that's what binds us together so that other things fall away. Paul shows that the law was not an end to itself, or the Jewishness was not an end of itself, but it was to point the way for the coming Christ. The law only works if you keep the whole law. And that was shown in the Jewish traditions as well, that they had, you know, the 20, um, 20, 10 commandments. Sorry, I was going to double them right here. <laughs> no, they went beyond that. They didn't have 20. They had 600. That's where I was going with that. Um, that they expanded all the things they needed to do. Um, and that wasn't the point either. The point was, Jesus was showing, we can't live under the law. The law was to point us to him, to himself. And so that the new covenant, through his blood, was that we were born into relationship with him. Um, we were born into a new family, and we're called sons. And that's what uh, Kate was reading about, through faith, we become sons of, of the living God. So then we arrive at after the summation um, at Galatians 5, 2. Did I skip ahead? So let's read that. It says, look, I, Paul, tell you that if you have yourselves been circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify again that every man himself circumcised that he is obligated to keep the whole law. If you have been severed from Christ... You who are seeking to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. So circumcision was one of the customs of the Jews to show that they were set apart by Jesus, or set apart by God before Jesus came. And what Paul was advocating as well as he worked with the Jews in Galatia was that all people would be circumcised. Um, and Paul was saying, no, that's not right at all. That's going back to something you can do, um, something in the flesh, something where you're promoting yourself. Um, and we're not to be doing that. We are called instead to be connected to the Holy Spirit. That is one thing we talked about a lot this morning um, is the different um, techniques and the different resources that the church has so that we can connect to Jesus. And it's not that any one of those resources in, is um, promoted in and of itself. But they are all different ways for us as individuals that we can connect to Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit. You see, through the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to bring God and the supernatural into our everyday lives. Um, I'll relate it back to my own story in this way. Well, when I grew up in, um, in here in, in Redmond, actually, um, I had the opportunity after high school to travel with a group called the Continentals. And that was just a traveling singing group where we went and we had a message um, to share with different churches and different communities uh, on a long road trip over, I don't know, say 10, 10 weeks. Um, and we traveled by bus. And it was really interesting because we would start in one place, um, we'd have a concert, and then we would go to sleep with a host family. We'd get up super early in the morning, we'd show back up at the bus, and then we would travel five hours or so to the next town. And during that travel time, we were expected 
um, we were asked and we were encouraged to have a devotional time. So every day for 10 weeks during these travels, I would have devotional time where I was sitting and reading, and I started with uh, the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And as I was reading through Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, um, I would read a section every day, and I'd pray and, on it. And I found that the Holy Spirit would meet me where I was reading from, where I'd meet me where I was at. Um, so much so that I would read about a demon-possessed man, and then I would meet, uh, I can remember Roberto, um, later in that day, and he was talking about being demon-possessed, and how I'd come out of that, and I was like, I was just reading about this. Um, and then there were other opportunities where someone was asking about how I'm being born again, and what does that really mean? And I had just read about Nicodemus, and I could just say, hey, I know about this. I, over and over again, throughout those 10 weeks, I found the Holy Spirit was taking what he was depositing in my life in the, in the morning, and he was using it in the concert, in the host family, sometime throughout that day. And it was happening over and over again. And that really transformed my life. So I didn't just use it during that time, but I took it into college. And when I was finding community there, I was sharing with them. I was using it over and over again. Um, and it was great and it was inspiring. Uh, but a lot of times I found that I would look back to that and I say, I remember that but I wouldn't keep up in that. And as we talked a little bit about John sharing from Jesus, um, Jesus had a life where he lived that, not just for 12, 12 weeks, but he lived it over and over and over again to such a degree that he said, I can do nothing apart from the Father, right? Um, and that's learning to pray. That's learning to live in that place of prayer. And that's where it doesn't become just devotions, um, but it comes a delight. John used that word, and it really stuck out to me. Um, I can continue that a little bit, and we encourage that in our youth group here at Arbor Heights. Um, but a lot of times, I'll take the learnings from the kids, and I'll go, they got it, and then I'll go home and forget about it, and not remember that I have to take that to work with me, that I have to take that to the neighborhood with me um, through a meeting or through a conversation. You see, Paul put it blatantly that if we focus on what we have to do as far as um, accomplishments, that we're not really getting to the heart of the message. I have another example of this. Um, when I grew up in, an, in a church in Redmond, uh, the church didn't have a facility. They just met in a, in a gymnasium. And it was really neat wake, um, going to church in that, that um, situation because uh, we didn't have chairs out. And so every, every Sunday morning before church, we had to set up all the chairs. You had to have to set up the stage. You had to set it all. And I got to work with a lot of the other um, people in the church, and I got to serve together. And I was like, this is great. It was like the uh, community group serving together. Um, but it's not that the chairs were up, right? That wasn't church. Church was actually coming in to meet Jesus, and the chairs just allowed that to happen. Um, Another example is here at Arbor Heights. Well, we own our building. It's a very different um, circumstance. But there's other things that have to happen, like we talked about um, having a bathroom on the main floor so that people can come here who are wheelchair-bound and not have to say, oh, I got to go to the bathroom, so I'm done with church. Which, as I did an interview with a lot of the people who were wheelchair-bound or immobile, they're like, that's my reality. Um, and that can't be right. That that hinders the sharing of the Spirit. Um, so the Spirit um, is, is the focus, um, encouraging the Spirit in one another. Um, another example is Levi. He was just up here, and we shared about him. He's been helping with Daniel and Levi, our great um, youth who are serving, but they're not serving just to do something on a Sunday morning. They're praying, and they're coming to God, and they're saying, through our service, Lord, we want you to be glorified. I want the technicality of the service to come off in such a way that the people are not distracted, but they can focus on you. And that's the purpose of why we do things. But a lot of times, like in me, I'll get stuck in, in what I am doing, and I'll say, I'm just doing it. I'm doing it out of my own flesh. I haven't taken that um, next step or that initial step to come to God first and to say, what should I be doing? How can I glorify you um, in this time that you've given me, in this place that I get, you've given me? Other times, it's I have my own agendas, right? 
um, I've got a set of things to do in order to, to accomplish some type of task, and becomes project oriented. Um, and that's built up through work. Work is a lot of time project oriented, so I'll be thinking of some sort of success. I have to get to some end goal, and I'm just gonna march through and do the steps. But in life, Jesus says, no, if you're connected to me, I'm actually going to throw you some curveballs. I'm going to step in. And I'm going to ask you to step outside yourself and acknowledge me in what I'm doing around you. And we have that opportunity, but sometimes we fight it, or I fight it. I find myself fighting it. And I'm like, no, um, I've, I've got to get this thing done. Um, and I can step away from the Holy Spirit. But we'll get back to this. This is the example of of what was happening in Galatia, right? Um, they were putting forth uh, circumcision. They were putting forth an old understanding. They were putting forth, become a Jew, and then Jesus will be relevant. And Paul is saying, no, you're missing the whole point of the gospel. Um, he said, in, in that case, it's becoming like a religious chore, right? Um, we do these certain things so that we are um, relevant to God or we are acceptable to God and it's not that at all. Um, God wants to have a relationship with us. That purpose in the morning or that purpose throughout the day where we're pr praying and we're connected um, is so that we can not just be devoted to him but we can delight in him and he can delight in us and through us he can reach others. Um, in Philippians 2, 2 through 8, it talks about um, being like-minded with Jesus. That this is what Jesus was talking about when he said vine living, right? That he wanted us to be connected with the Father in such a way that the Father is able to um, feed and work through us to get fruit to reach the world. And we're to be like-minded with Jesus, having that same love, being in one spirit and one mind, not doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility, valuing others above ourselves. You see, the Holy Spirit disciplines us to connect with the Father and invite, invite the Father to join with us um, such that we're living supernaturally through him. But as the church here in Galatia, or maybe even here at Arbor Heights, sometimes in my life, um, I've turned aside from that. I've, I've kind of just said, I saw what I did back in the continental days, or I saw what the high schoolers are doing, um, but not realizing that he's calling me each and every day to live that and to be part of that. Paul says it's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to direct us daily such that we can be part of this supernatural living in all contexts of our lives. So whether I'm going to a meeting that could be um, contentious and I'm bringing the power of the Holy Spirit there, or whether I'm making a financial decision and I'm just like, oh, do I like Turkey or do I like Spain or do I, you know, it's about connecting with him. Where is he calling me to? What does he want me to do? The purpose is that we're connecting with God and we're bringing him. He is bringing us. See, I've even said it wrong. He's bringing us into what he's doing. We're putting up our sail so we can connect with the Holy Spirit. That's another allegory of what we talked about here. We want to get away from allegories. But we're going to God in prayer and we're saying, Lord, use me. Lord, in what ways am I um, not being useful? Am I promoting my own flesh so that he can prune those ways away and he can promote what he actually wants and what he's actually doing? And to do that, we have to be in communication with him. Paul says this is an opportunity to explore the Holy Spirit directing us and to incite some critical thinking, say, critical prayers, praying that in each situation, Lord, what would you have me do? How would you have me act? How are you moving that I can join with what you're doing? Um, and it might not be comfortable, but as we find our comfort in him and we see the supernatural working around us, we are made joy complete. So what we do ultimately choose comes out of our focus. If we just focus on the project, if we just focus on the task, and not the project giver, not the task giver, not the li life giver, not the relationship giver, um, we're focused on the wrong thing. We're focused on um, a fleshly or a human 
existence. We're focused on what we can do, and we're not connected with the supernatural. The supernatural is doing things all around us, but it's up to us to delight in him. Just like John shared, this is a life of prayer. This was the life of Jesus. This is where Jesus said, apart from the Father, I can do nothing. And I have to challenge myself that I try to do a lot of things apart from the Father. But if I'm to live like Jesus, if I'm to live like Christ, I am to go to the Father first and let his spirit work through me. Not sequestered, I'm out in the world. Sequestered means I'm set apart and, and in my own little convent. No, I am called to, to work in a certain place. I am called to Arbor Heights. I am called to be a father. I am called to go out and to work with my kids as they do sports or they do theater. Whatever God has called you into, he's called you there. He wants to join you, and he wants to use you in that place. Um, because it's not in our own strength. And it's not where we have decided to go, but it's where he has led us if we're willing to submit to him and to go where he leads us. And then we're living in that new covenant. We're living in a covenant where he um, is our father and we are his children. And we are walking in his spirit. Walking meaning taking step by step. It's not that I had walked, but I'm walking. I am step by step going with him where he is directing me. And when I've gone to the wrong place, being soft-hearted to let him redirect me to another place. And that as I'm going along to those places and he throws an interruption to say, yes, Lord, I'm here, use me. When we have that attitude and when that living's ingrained and when we're sharing it with one another, it becomes infectious, right? So it's not just that I can say, the youth are doing this, but I can be part of that and I can be excited and I can say, and God used me in this way and I can share that with you and you can say, and God's using me in this way and together we become a church that is moved by the Spirit where the Spirit is bringing the supernatural into our everyday living. That is that we seek Jesus and his Holy Spirit to direct and send us that we fulfill his service. That's living in Christ, and that's living supernatural lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that you are here. We thank you and praise you that you have given us hearts, and you've given us breath, and you've given us the desire to seek you. Heavenly Father, we need you. Without you, we can do nothing. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to speak and you continue to soften our hearts that we may know the ways to seek you and to let you work through us in jesus name we pray amen thank you would you stand and worship with me So great a mercy 
What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages, down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living home. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to break. And out of the silence, the roaring lion. The grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your bearing body began to breathe. And out of the silence, the roaring lion declared. Jesus, yours is the victory. Say hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation. to the one who called us out of the grave and we're still alive today in him. Let's sing about that glorious day. The 
I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you And I was breathing But not alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I may you call my name in I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you call my name in I into your glorious day and now your mercy has saved my soul and now your freedom is all that I know the old made new Jesus when I met you you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you called my name My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. When you call my name, oh, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name. sit down. We'll wrap it up reading from Galatians chapter 5, 13 and 14. 
For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I hope you all leave here today and you dwell on the fact that God has already paid the price for you. Like, you're good. All you need to do is go serve people. We have a whole book full of examples. You have lives you've had. You have mentors in your life who do a good job at this. Today, this week, as you go out, find opportunities to serve. Show what Jesus' love looks like in a practical and real way. You are free. Don't go pick up a yoke. Tell people what it's like. Reach out. You're saved. Amen. Uh -huh.